Hi everyone, welcome to Excel Gorilla. My name is Rick and I'm going to talk to you about the basics of the sum product formula. Now, why would you want to know about the sum product formula at all? It's a great function to have underneath your belt. A sum product formula can function as a sum, sum if, count, count if, max if, even an index match can be replicated. But there's many more options available. Also, by its very nature, the sum product formula can handle arrays. And advanced users might know that to work with arrays, they normally have to press Control, Shift, and Enter for it to work. And that can be a big pain. And the sum product formula takes this pain away. Now I'm going to talk about the sum product's arguments, how to use them, and how to multiply arrays. Let's get to it. So let's start out with a basic syntax of the sum product formula. So if I start writing is sum product, you're going to see its arguments. And sum product requires you to enter one or multiple arrays. I'm going to save these arguments just for later. Look back. I'm going to press Control Shift A. So, and I'm just going to save this on the worksheet. Here we go. So Control Shift A adds the function's arguments to, uh, in your Excel worksheet, so you can have a look at it later. Now, by default, sum product multiplies all the arguments you put in, so all the arrays. And then after multiplication, it's going to add the sum of those multiplications together. Now, that's very opaque, so let's look at an example. First of all, what is an array? In its very basic form, an array is a list of values. This could be numbers, letters, symbols, or a combination of those all. Now I'm going to enter a random list of values, which we're going to use as our array. I'm going to make a selection, write is random between 0 and 150, control enter. That's going to provide me with a list, but I don't want this list to change because if I write 5 now, it's going to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and paste it as values. Now this could be considered an array. Now I can supply that to the sum product formula if I like. Is sum product. I'm going to make a selection for center. And the total is equal to 632. Now this is actually equal to the sum show you to the sum of the numbers in the array so so far you can use the sum product as the same formula as a sum as long as there is a single array now what if we add another array here let's add this array to the formula as well As you can see right now, adding two arrays to a sum product formula is not the same as adding a sum formula and just adding up the numbers. So what's happening here? What you're actually seeing is the following. The sum product formula takes the first value in array one and multiplies it by the first value in array two. Then it takes the second value in array one and then multiplies it by the second value in array two. And it's gonna do that for all the values in the array. That's why it's also important to make sure that your arrays that you're supplying to some product are of the same length. For example, if I do this, you're going to get an error because the number of values in the arrays is not equal. So let's put it back. Now, if I press a one here, and let's remove this for clarity you're going to see that the total result is 68 because 68 times one is 68. 11 times zero is zero. 88 times zero is zero. So what's happening is there is a multiplication of this value times this value. And then if you pull that down all the way and add a sum formula, you're going to get the 68. And that's exactly what the sum product formula does. 
So you learned right now what an array is and what some product does with those arrays. Now, let's look at a few practical examples. So in this worksheet, you see a table with the sales for six salespeople in a certain week. Now, if we just want to have the total sales, we could just add is some product. Voila. This is nothing new. You just learned that. Let's add a parameter. Then I'm going to add the cell style input. Okay. Let's see if we can adjust the formula to reflect the parameter. So I'm going to edit. And normally what you would do is you're going to multiply the first array by the second array that equals Barry. And to do that, I'm going to make the selection, write an is sign equal to Barry. And unfortunately, the result is not as you might have expected. And the reason for that is as follows. Let me move that to the right. If I write that cell B3 is equal to Barry, the result is true. And if I pull this down for all the values, the rest is going to be false. Now, if I write a sum product formula, and I multiply it with another array that has true and false values. Some product is not going to like that. It's reading the true and false values not as numbers. So to fix this, we're going to have to turn these true and false values to numbers. And you can do that with the following trick. We're going to add two minus signs before our condition. And this is going to first make the, the true number negative. So from and then it's going to make it positive again. So it's two times a negation. It's a little trick to force Excel to see something as a number. And right now, this sum product formula recognizes uh, which cells equal Barry. So those are these two. Now, if you want that to be reflected in our sum product formula without having a helper column, you can add the double negation here too. So minus minus. Here we go. And we're going to get to the same number. Now you can add this double negation to all the area arguments that you want to make, but I don't recommend that. A little trick that you could use is put the array arguments in a single argument. So what's going to happen is I'm going to open the brackets and close this one. I'm going to multiply it by this table. So what you'll see is it's all within the same array argument, but still it's multiplying the arrays. Now let's look at the result. The result is still 1204, even though we've only used a single array argument. So this is a little trick I recommend to you. Now, we can add lots of other parameters. We can add a minimum value. I'm going to add a minimum value of 600 euros. So what I'm asking now is for the sum product formula to return all values that are at least 600 euros and where the salesperson is called Barry. So to do that, I'm going to extend this formula by saying this one. Don't forget the bracket right here. It has to be equal. Uh, greater than or equal to this parameter. Close another bracket. And now the answer is 921. Because the first it first matches for everything that's equal to Barry, and then it matches for everything bigger or equal to 600, which is only this value. Okay, so today you learned two important skills for working with some product. The first one is multiplying arrays, and the second one is adding criteria. Some product is actually much more advanced than that. You can, for example, learn how to connect it to a slicer. You can add very many criteria without having to write it manually. But those are all for future videos. If you learned something today and like this video, please like it below and subscribe to my channel to not miss out on any new videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.